So, I'm sure we all know about theropods, some of the most famous creatures to have ever walked the earth. But what if I told you that there was a subcategory within this group, known as megatheropods. This group consists of theropods above a certain weight class, and I do note that within this video, I'll be using the metric system. As far as my research has taken me, the title of megatheropod, well, varies. Some say it's over 3 tons, other say it's over 7, but for this video, I'll be ranking every megatheropod at the 6 ton minimum range. Mind you, I'll be using averages, so some theropods may not be in this video because I'm not counting their absolute peaks. Anyways, let's get into the video, kicking it off with the BTs. Starting off with the first Spinosaurid, we have Oxalia. This ancestor of Spinosaurus measured around 12 meters in length and 4 meters in height, an impressive size for a unique theropod. Although there isn't an expansive amount of fossil evidence for this creature, it's likely that it averaged a 6 metric ton range, just pushing it into the category of megatheropod. We now move on to one of our only herbivorous theropods, the Therizinosaurus. These feathered megatheropods grew to 10 meters in length and stood at a whopping 5 meters in height. These dinos could have stared at our modern day giraffes right in the eyes. Clearly, since they made the list, they would have been quite heavy, reaching approximately 6.1 metric tons. What made these theropods stand out so much was the meter long claws that they fashioned. It's clear that this girl was armed from bones to claws, practically the wolverine of the dinosaur world. There's no doubt in my mind that if a predator tried to mess with this theropod, they'd be in for a rude awakening. Living alongside the Therizinosaurus, we have the omnivorous megatheropod Dinocurus. This duck-billed theropod reached lengths of 11 meters and stood 4 meters in height. They would have weighed an average of 6.2 metric tons. Now, despite living with predators such as Tarbosaurus, this oversized duck was more than protected with its 2.4 meter long arms and three 8-inch claws that fashioned each hand. It's kind of weird how the two non-strict carnivores on this list specialize in extended arms and claws. But to be fair, I don't think teeth would quite cut it when you're eating plants. Now we move back onto the carnivores. We have the Acrocanthosaurus, also known as the high-spined lizard. This Caracodontosaurid wasn't any slouch. They measured an average of 11 meters in length and 4 meters in height. I calculated that it had an average weight of 6.3 metric tons. This is one of my favorites, as I've always been quite fond and interested, especially with the theories they hunted through grappling, tore off its food straight from the herbivore. Let's jump up to the A tier. I'll be honest, I'm actually quite surprised about the next runner up, this being Caracodontosaurus. I always thought of the Cara as a contender for being one of the largest, if not the largest carnivore. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's small. Measuring at 12.5 meters in length and 4.3 meters in height, it weighed approximately seven tons. However, despite being large, it's not quite large enough to go any higher than this at the moment. On to Tyrannotitan. Now let's be honest, this is one of the most badass names of any dinosaurs. It's practically the Cobra Kai of the dinosaur world. When I was a kid, I used to think that this titan was part of the Tyrannosaur family due to the whole, well, Tyranno name similarity. Should have seen my surprise when I learned that they weren't related to T-Rexes, but rather more closely related to the Giganotosaurus. These titans measured at 12 meters in length and 4.5 meters in height. Over the years, these theropods have gotten quite buffed and weighed at 7.2 tons. Now you thought we were done with the family of Caracodontosaurids? Well, you're wrong. This is Mapusaurus. It's almost as if the family never ends. Anyways, this dino grew at an impressive 12.2 meters in length and stood at 4.3 meters in height. It averaged an impressive weight of 7.5 metric tons. Now, I've got to say, I'm sure you all have noticed here that these megatheropods aren't too far spread in terms of weight, length, and height. You're mainly hearing me repeat close to the same numbers all over again. As time progresses, there's a good chance that the ranking could shift ever so slightly and maybe, hey, the Marplesaurus will go under the Tyranotitan or whatever. We can never be overly certain with these things, but that's what makes this so interesting. Anyways, onto one of the most strange theropods in this list, the Spinosaurus. Talking about this spine dino is the bane of almost anyone's existence because it isn't an interesting dinosaur, but rather our knowledge is lackluster and ever-changing. Just look at our design over, over the last few decades. You can see it dramatically changes. As for its size, well that's also changed significantly over the time. At the moment, 
it could have measured to 14 meters in length and reach a height of six meters. Now its weight has fluctuated over time with first belief scaling it to nearly 20 tons. I think we can all agree that's a bit far-fetched. However, currently it's much more likely that it would have weighed approximately 7.7 .7 tons. Certainly nothing to scoff at, but a fair bit less than previously thought. Though I think that we can agree that with the constant changes of this Spinosaur, who knows how long until its size alters once more, and it may even be put up another rank. Now we're onto what I consider to be the STs, the apex predators of the Megatheropods, the ones that stand above the rest with their pure size. First, we kick it off with the king of the South Americas, the Giganotosaurus, or Gigantosaurus, however you want to pronounce it. Forget about megatheropods, this is a gigatheropod, being contended to be one of the largest land predators to ever exist. The giga measured a whopping 13.4 meters in length and stood at an imposing five meters in height. Onto the more important scale, its weight. After calculating and estimating, its average weight would have been to 8.6 tons. That's nearly an entire ton on the Spinosaur. Now we might have gone through the King of the South, but why don't we move on to the Tyrant Lizard King, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Despite decades passing from its discovery, it still battles it out to remain the King of the Dinosaurs, and it still succeeds. It may have been a bit shorter than many of the other theropods, reaching approximately 12 meters in length and 4.4 meters in height, yet it made up for this with its pure mass. From my averaging, it weighed an impressive 8.8 .8 tons. For this, it more than deserves to sit comfortably at first place. However, I should preface the size difference between the Rex and the Giga. The fact is, both of their average and maximum weights are so close that it could go either way. I know some recently published papers suggest that Giga could have weighed more on the larger ends. However, I refrain from putting that in due to how fragmentary Giga remains are especially compared to the T-Rex. It's hard to say for sure, but at the moment, I'm on the side that on average and at the absolute maximum, the Rex would have weighed more and hence was larger. Here are some honorable mentions that didn't quite make the list, either because they missed the weight mark or because there's heavy debate about their fossils and what family they belong to. And I won't lie, there was a fair bit of fossils that people aren't sure whether or not it's the same of another dinosaur or what. For example, there's a Spinosaurus fossil found and some say they're the same species, Others say it's part of Spinosaurus aegypticus. So I decided to leave those unknowns out. So if you have any questions, that's why. The first being Saurophaganax, then Torvosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and Allosaurus. There are a few others that didn't make the list, but those are the central ones and well, the most popular ones, which just missed out. And just before I wrap up, I wanted to give credit to these two YouTubers right here. I mean, without them, I wouldn't have even known that the category of Megatheropod was a thing. So don't forget to check out their channel if you're not already subscribed to them. Anyways, I hope you all enjoy the video. I wasn't sure I was even going to finish this on time considering how much research that was needed to put into this and as well as the math to work out each of the theropod size. But hey, we got here in the end. Special thanks to everyone that subscribed as we just hit 1000 subs and can't wait to see what the future holds for us. As always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all next time. See ya.